Reading is a waste of time, unless you have a bulletproof system that forces you to remember and apply everything you read. I always thought that by reading a book, I automatically learned something. But then I came across this definition by Alex Hormozzi, and it completely changed how I read books. Learning equals to same condition, different behavior. So unless your behavior changes after reading a book, you haven't learned anything. So in this video, I'll give you the psychology behind always remembering what you read, the four levels of reading that turn wasting your time, pretending that you're learning something into actually changing your behavior through reading. Now, this is the multi-store model of memory. And even though it's oversimplified, it helps me understand something I never wanted to accept. If you do not rehearse something, you will not remember it. And on the flip side, if you rehearse anything enough times, you will remember it. So this model argues that any information that enters our brain has to pass through each of these locations one after the other. And then in the end, it is stored in our long-term memory, which is what we call remembering it. I don't know about you, but I had to break my honestly quite stupid belief that you only have to repeat information when it comes to studying for something like an exam and that it must be different for books well because you just read them but as so often in life i was wrong so i want to drive this home for you because in the self-improvement space everyone acts as if reading non-fiction books by itself is a productive thing to do but reading non-fiction books without any system is like playing video games but forgetting to save your progress. So how do you change your life by reading books without going through the excruciatingly boring repetition? This is where my four levels of reading come into play, with the last one being the most effective. The first level of reading is what we were all taught in school, highlighting. But science shows us that highlighting actually gives us a false sense of mastery. We don't remember something just because we highlight it we actually just trick ourselves into thinking that we learned it. Because who goes over what they highlighted in a book anyways? So the conclusion is level one, by highlighting what you read, you, at best, feel better about yourself while reading and, at worst, waste your precious time pretending to be learning while you're not. Level two is much more powerful because it forces you to rehearse the information at least once. And this is what it looks like for me. After making it to the end of a chapter, I open my notion page for books and I jot down the core ideas I can still remember. But watch out not to shoot for perfection with these notes. Instead, just train your brain to come up with your own words for what you just read. So unless I ended up completely lost after reading a chapter, I try to not look at it again and instead paraphrase everything that's on top of my mind. So at the end of your reading session, answer the following prompt first. In your own words and no more than two sentences, what is the core idea the author tries to convey? Now level three is one of my favorite techniques because it forces you to really get in touch with what you're reading. And this level creates a slight emotional connection and reaction to the book you're reading, which allows you to remember it more easily. It's all about agreeing or disagreeing with what you've just read. Now, of course, there won't be a big argument to fight over in every single chapter, but even then, you can apply this technique. For all the major points an author makes, you should write down the answers to these prompts. The author's point is true for me because, the author's point is false for me because, the author didn't consider this detail. Now, the fourth level is the most powerful when it comes to remembering your books and making changes to your life that stick. At the end of every reading session, force yourself to come up with one thing you will act on before 11 a.m. the next day. So you take one lesson you learned and turn it into an actionable step. This works so unbelievably well because we remember things we say plus do above everything else. There's no need for this to be crazy and life-changing, but it's all about taking a book that lives in its own world grabbing it by the throat and dragging it into your reality. Without doing this, James Clear's Atomic Habits aren't worth much and Robert Greene's Laws of Human Nature are nothing but fancy words on a piece of paper. Merge two realities. Force the one of the book you're reading and the one of your own 
to become one. Now I like using 11 a.m. for this because it doesn't allow me to put it off until the afternoon, then the evening, and then the next day, which eventually leads to never. But if you're still struggling with even getting yourself to read a book, then watch this video where I break down how to make discipline easy in one single step.